Thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel. My name is Christiana Sagi. On this channel, I will be teaching about international law, and these teachings will be in the form of short weekly lecture series. Over time, I will be surfacing varied concepts of international law. When and where applicable, these concepts will be analyzed and brought to you as it relates to current trends in international law as they arise. At the end of this lecture, you will find the transcript of the lecture in the link below. Also, for current trend and analysis in international law, you can subscribe to my blog. All the details you will find in the comment section below. For the 24th lecture in this lecture series, we'll be exploring another of the principal organs of the United Nations established in Article 7 of the United Nations Charter, the Security Council. In this lesson, we will be discussing the function, composition, and mode of operation of the Security Council. First off, what is the essence of the Security Council? The Security Council is an organ of the United Nations set up with the primary responsibility, as the name implies, maintaining international peace and security. And we see this spelled out in Article 24, 1 of the UN Charter. In addition to that, the Security Council is also saddled with the responsibilities of recommending to the General Assembly the Secretary General's appointment and electing judges of the International Court of Justice, along with the General Assembly. The options available to the Security Council in fulfilling its mandate are broad and far-reaching. For instance, uh, the Security Council derived powers from Chapter 6 for its role in Pacific settlement of disputes. Chapter 7 of the United Nations Charter for its role in determining if there exists threats to peace, breaches of peace and acts of aggression, and devising actions to quell them. Chapter 8 for its role in the encouragement of the development of regional arrangements for maintaining international peace. And chapter 12 for its role in exercising trusteeship functions. One example of the powers derived by the Security Council is its enforcement power encapsulated in Chapter 7 of the United Nations Charter. These powers are extensive. Chapter 7 specifically provides the framework within which the Security Council may take enforcement actions, military and non-military. These enforcement actions may include sanctions such as economic and trade sanctions, arms embargo, travel bans, financial or commodity restrictions, withdrawal of armed forces, cessation of hostilities, creation of international tribunals as we saw with the international criminal tribunals for the former Yugoslavia and Rwanda creation of compensation fund for damage as a result of invasion, deployment of military forces and peacekeeping missions. Essentially, the measure to be utilized will be more targeted and based on the unique situations. But essentially, the Security Council has a wide discretion in determining what actions will suit its enforcement powers. According to Article 23.1 of the United Nations Charter, the Security Council consists of 15 members, five permanent members and 10 not permanent members. The five permanent members of the Security Council are China, Russia, the United Kingdom, France, and the United States of America. The General Assembly elects the non-permanent members for a two-year term. Currently, the non-permanent members of the Security Council are Estonia, India, Ireland, Kenya, Mexico, Niger, Norway, St. Vincent and Grenadines, Tunisia, and Vietnam. 
Each member of the council, permanent and not permanent alike, uh, assumes the presidency of the council on a monthly basis. The presidency is allocated following the um, English alphabetical order of the names of the member states. China serves as the president for the month of May. According to Article 28.1 of the United Nations Charter, the Security Council is organized to function continuously. These include formal meetings, consultations, video conference briefings, and informal interactive dialogues. I have included a hyperlink in the transcript to the provisional program of work of the Security Council for April 2021, just to give you an idea of what a month at the Security Council can look like. As with members of the General Assembly, members of the Security Council also have voting rights. But how these voting rights exercise differ for the permanent and non-permanent members. What do I mean? Generally speaking, each member has one vote. Where matters being deliberated on at the Security Council is a procedural one to scale through in needs to secure an affirmative vote of nine of the 15 members. When a vote is to be made on a substantive issue, there must also be nine affirmative votes. But the makeup of the voters in each of these categories is essential to highlight. With substantive issues of the nine affirmative votes needed, it needs to have all of the permanent members giving a concurring vote. So of the nine votes needed, Five of those votes need to come from the five permanent members. So essentially, there is a higher threshold for substantive issues. In this lesson, we have covered broadly the function, composition, current membership, and operating procedure of the Security Council. In our next lesson, we will be exploring another organ of the United Nations. So I want to say thank you so very much for joining in. Remember to like, share, subscribe, leave your comments in the comment section below and hit the notification bell so that you're notified when there's a new video. We would also like to connect with you on Facebook and Twitter. Let us know the content you'd like to see. Thank you.